Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make incredible breakfast burritos at home. As usual, I've got a crack team of amateur taste testers to compare my recipe to a store-bought version. And this time, we'll be blindfolding them. That looks like a bra. You can put your hand up. <laughs> Where is the mouth? For comparison, I picked up this tiny little guy from the grocery store. Packaging says it's a home-style breakfast burrito, so let's see how it tastes. Do I have to eat this? Yes. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I didn't get a whole lot of the home style flavoring in this. In fact, if I came to your home and you served me this, we would not be friends. I think we can do better. Did I make it in? I think you did. Who's a good basketball player? Who's a good burrito ball player? I think I might have hit the ceiling. <laughs> Let's start with this addictively good vegan queso sauce. You'll need one cup of raw cashews that have been soaked or boiled, a half cup of coconut yogurt, unsweetened, a half cup of your favorite salsa, a teaspoon of cumin for some warm earthiness, a half teaspoon each of chili powder and smoked paprika, a couple tablespoons of water, two tablespoons pickled jalapenos. This is what really brings that nacho-y, queso-y flavor. And get a couple tablespoons of that tangy brine as well. Two tablespoons of vegan gold sprinkles, AKA nutritional yeast for that cheesy flavor. Pop on the lid, give Give everything a blend and scrape down the sides as you go and look at that. This cheese sauce is so creamy, it's luxurious, and it's truly delightful. The great thing about this sauce, in addition to being amazing, is it'll stay good in your fridge for a week so you can make it ahead of time. I use it in my Crunchwrap Supreme, I use it in my Buffalo Chickpea Quesadillas. As you can see, it's so easy and it's so worth making. It's time for our classic vegan breakfast edition, Tofu Scramble. Start with one block of firm tofu, drain off the water, and tightly wrap it in a dish towel or a few sheets of paper towels, weigh it down with a heavy book or some canned goods or both, and this is going to press out the excess water that will help the tofu absorb the other much needed flavors. Speaking of those other flavors, now let's make our spiced eggy sauce. You need a quarter teaspoon of turmeric, half teaspoon each of onion powder and garlic powder, quarter teaspoon of paprika, half teaspoon of crushed chipotle chilies for some smoky heat, and a half teaspoon of kala namak, AKA Indian black salt. The black salt is really unique and brings a distinctive eggy taste. Oh look, it's those vegan gold sprinkles again. Two tablespoons of these. Traditional scrambled eggs, pretty high in fat. You've got the eggs, sometimes you add milk, you add butter, so to make mimic some of that high fat nature in a plant-based way. I'm gonna add tahini, which is sesame seed paste, and some plant-based milk. That's gonna add kind of a creamy, rich mouthfeel in a wholesome vegan way. It's been about 15 minutes, so let's grab our pressed tofu, and you can just crumble it with your hands into chunks. Not too big, not too small, nothing fancy. Heat up a little bit of olive oil in a large nonstick pan, medium high heat. Once the oil is hot, add the crumbled tofu. Make sure you're using a large frying pan, this is a 12 inch, to ensure the tofu can spread out in a single layer and don't stir too frequently. This way you'll get a nice golden crust on the tofu. If you have any large chunks, you can break those up with a spatula. And the reason I like to use firm tofu is that you get a little bit of browning, but the tofu is still soft enough that it mimics the texture of scrambled eggs quite nicely. Pour in that spiced eggy sauce, and I like to use a silicon spatula to ensure each piece of tofu, each nook and cranny, each crevice is coated in the sauce. Remember, unseasoned tofu is not good. The scramble is now beautifully golden from that turmeric, and you might get a whiff of eggs from the Kalanamic. Don't worry, that's what it's supposed to smell like. And I don't want the scramble to be too runny or soft since it's going into a burrito. So I'll cook this down for a couple minutes. And wow, this is looking remarkably similar to scrambled eggs. Let's give it a try. That's pretty eggy. The kala namak, which is the black salt, Indian black salt, you can find this at Indian grocery stores as well as online. It really brings that classic eggy flavor. So if you miss the taste of eggs or you just enjoy the taste of eggs, it's a great addition. It does kind of lose its potency as it cooks. So I like to add a couple of dashes right at the end before serving. Just a warning, this smells like, shall we say, sulfur? a bit intense, but it does go away pretty quickly and it certainly doesn't taste like that. A good breakfast burrito needs some sort of crispy potato situation, so grab some yellow potatoes like Yukon Gold, peel those babies up. I'm using 20 to 22 ounces of potatoes. You can easily double this recipe if you want. You'll probably want to because these potatoes are outrageously addictive. Try to cut them into as uniform sized pieces as possible, about one half to three quarters inch pieces. And now let's give them a quick cold water soak, just five minutes. Then use your trusty hands to give them a very 
vigorous swirl, soaking the potatoes in cold water, agitating them, and then draining off that starchy water and again, rinsing in fresh water. This whole process is going to release a lot of the starch, which is going to help the potatoes crisp up more in the oven. Dry the potatoes off with a dish towel because, well, wet potatoes are soggy potatoes. Uh, nobody likes those. Transfer them to a parchment paper lined baking sheet and toss with a couple tablespoons of regular olive oil or avocado oil. And now let's toss the potatoes with a tablespoon of cornstarch and some black pepper. If you're wondering, what about salt, Nisha? Don't you always pre-salt your veggies? Yes, but with potatoes, if we salted them now, it's going to draw out their moisture and they're gonna end up being soft instead of crispy. So we'll wait on that salt. Put these babies in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how small you've cut them. And once they're golden on the bottom, give them a flip and back into the oven until they're beautifully golden brown. Okay, now it's time to add some sea salt. Salting at the end, while the potatoes are still warm, is gonna give them this really nice crunch. We can't forget the avocado. Oh wait, one more thing. If you want extra crispiness in your your burrito or an alternative to roasted potatoes, you can also try adding some mushroom bacon. You can make mushroom bacon with king oyster or king trumpet mushrooms like I did here or with shiitake mushrooms. All right, back to the avocado thing. This is almost too simple. Take one perfectly ripe avocado, dice it up, and then sprinkle it with some lime juice and salt. That's it. Let's add a little heat, shall we? We're gonna make a salsa fresca, also known as pico de gallo, a fresh salsa made with just a handful of ingredients. You'll need to dice up some red onion, about three quarters cup, and one serrano pepper. You wanna finely mince this up so you don't get any large chunks of pepper in the salsa. Add the onions to a bowl, add those chili peppers, and we're gonna marinate these in a couple tablespoons of lime juice for 10 minutes. I finally bought a juicer, and I'm not exaggerating, has changed my life. I'm getting so much more juice out of my lemons and limes. I've linked this one in the description box if you are interested in getting your own. And season that with a bit of kosher salt and stir this beautiful mixture together. This marination process is going to mellow out the intense pungency of the raw onion. Now for our tomatoes. Pico de gallo is typically made with whole tomatoes, but it's not tomato season here, so I opted for some cherry tomatoes because they're sweeter. I don't wanna wash any extra dishes, so I opted to chop these by hand, but it is quicker if you pulse them in a food processor. Another key ingredient in pico de gallo, cilantro. We're chopping up a half Half cup of that. Now add those cherry tomatoes to the quick marinated onions and chili pepper. Try to leave as much of the tomato water behind so the salsa doesn't get too watery. And dump in the cilantro. Have I mentioned how useful a bench scraper is in the kitchen? You can find this one linked in the description box below. Okay, I'm just gonna say this. This is the prettiest salsa ever. Look at these colors. It's so simple to make and it's gonna be really flavorful. We'll season again with some salt and pepper and let this hang out for five to 10 minutes so the ingredients can get cozy with one another. Getting cozy really just means it's gonna taste more flavorful if you wait a little while. Feeling a little sweaty. Good thing we're serving this to my Indian parents because they love spicy food. One large serrano pepper with the seeds. It's very spicy. So if you have baby mouth, use a jalapeno pepper. If you want something in the middle, you can use a serrano pepper and take out the seeds. You can use half a serrano pepper, but one large serrano pepper with the seeds is pretty spicy. Okay, you've waited long enough, so let's assemble these burritos. Start with a generous dolloping of that cheese sauce. Don't be shy with it. Spoon that eggy tofu scramble on top. Add what's left of those crispy roasted potatoes because I know you've eaten some already by now. Get in there with some avocado and add a few spoons of the salsa, taking care to not add too much of the liquid. Our burrito is loaded. It's looking very beautiful and tasty. Now we just need to roll it up, actually. I'm not very good at this part, so I'm gonna have Max do it for me. This is Max cleaning up the messy burrito I've made. He wants me to tell you that to roll a burrito very easily, just pinch in the edges and fold the tortilla over the filling. Tuck the fillings into that tortilla, fold the edges in again, and give it a final roll. Final step, do not skip this. We're going to crisp up the burrito just a little bit in a saute pan to seal it up. This is a freaking good burrito. It's a great burrito. It's fantastic. It's got some nice creaminess from the avocado, that eggy texture and taste from the tofu scramble. It's chewy from the tortilla, a little crispy from searing the tortilla and from the crispy potatoes. It's got some nice heat from the salsa. So like all the good flavors and textures rolled up into one tortilla. I love it. So let's go see what the taste testers think. Have you guys ever had a breakfast burrito before? I have it. She never had it. How come you had it and I didn't have it? <laughs> We're gonna do a blind taste test today. So I've actually not told them what we're having or which version is mine. So we don't have blindfolds, but we do have sleep masks. So you're gonna have to put some sleep masks on. That looks like a bra. <laughs> well, here's your bra. I can't see nothing. Huh? <laughs> 
What size cup is that? <laughs> I messed up my hair. So we're gonna start with option one. So I'm gonna give you each a piece. You can put your hand up. <laughs> there is a mouth. You know where your mouth can is. Can I see? I cannot see. <laughs> can I eat now? Yes. Like this. There's a mouth too. <laughs> your mouth is in front of you. I need a little more salt. Being Indian, we like more salt. Which is not good for blood pressure. <laughs> do you like it? What do you think of it? It's okay. It's okay. I can't taste when my eyes are closed. Do you want to try the second one? Yeah. You have to try it first without the tapatio. I like this. One. Even with the eyes closed, I can taste it. All right, you guys can take your masks off. I mean, little brat. <laughs> What do you think of this second burrito? It has more flavor. This is really. It is more moist. It is a little bit salty and spicy, but I will put little more spice. Do you remember when I said the salsa was really spicy? Obviously, it didn't even. This is a. It didn't even register for him. Tapatio. Thank you, free advertising for tapatio. So, what do you know? What's in the breakfast burrito? Mexican food. Instead of egg, it has tofu. This is a burrito supreme. This is a frozen burrito. So in its defense it can never be spectacular this is a frozen burrito i heated it up in the oven it's not frozen now oh there it is by consensus my breakfast burrito won although not really a tough competition since the competitor was a frozen burrito i'm just going to take the w anyways and i'll see you guys in the next video